Hi, um, welcome to the Town of Totsum Community Center Committee meeting for November 6th. Um, and we are here too with our guests and happy to be further discussing um, the next steps. Um, any changes to this agenda? Anybody want to add anything or move anything? Good to get started on the focus group work. Um, okay, we'll move on to focus group work. Um, so as written, um, we're working with Brian and Allie T to review, um, the, and we're going to review the moderator guidelines um, created, created by Allison. So um, let's go to that. And there have been some changes made, it sounds like, and you had some ideas too, right? Or, yeah, a couple of suggestions. How do we want to approach this? About block by block. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sure thing. Do we read it just so we're all in the same place? Or I don't think we need to read no? okay. it. I don't think we need okay. to read it. Just... Okay. So what do we think about that introduction there? Any changes? I think if one of us is actually going to be the moderator, we're going to want to rephrase some of the stuff with how it's said because I think it's being written as somebody else that's presenting as on our behalf. So we're probably going to want to change a little bit of that wording. Okay. Again. Yeah. I'm trying to open the document right now, her document. Do you? So I believe you've agreed to do, be the moderator. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's in the how, how does that sit with you um a month later? Is that yeah, no, uh, still okay? Yeah, I'm still okay. good with that. Do you feel like you want these changes made on in that way right now, or is that something you're comfortable with to I think it would be better to have it um more of I'm here on behalf of the town of Thompson representing mm -hmm. the community center committee, something like that, mm -hmm. um, instead of I'm here working with the town of Topsom to um, that's saying it sounds like a third party saying town committee is exploring kind of feels like we are exploring, but that was just kind of how and I, I think. And I think that would be absolutely fine for you to say as a member of the yeah. community center committee, I'm here to speak with you. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's the one part that read a little clunky to me when I was mm -hmm. first reading it. So I think she's re writing it as a third person. Yeah. Should we make changes on the document? Yeah. Yeah. It's a template right now. You can do it. Which should help. I think yeah. Get it open. Right. And that's that's okay. okay. I think that Allison has done enough of this. That well, I had some. All my suggestions are in that document, so oh, I can't open okay. it. Okay. Let's see. Do you have Wi-Fi here? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it on? Is it calling? I don't know. Did they send you a code? Because when I did it today, they sent a code to your email to open it. Yes, it's on the SharePoint site, so that's in the cloud. Yeah. So you have to be connected to Wi Fi because maybe I'm not connected with you. There's a uh, super secret password. Did you have anything super in this first secret. section as far as you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tox Guest is the network. What is it? Tox Guest. You see that? That's one of your choices. I, I can't understand what he said. T O E S gas. Oh, top gas. You know, like top gas. Yeah, how did I know that? <laughs> Thank you all. It's their last night. Might as well. Yeah. Do her. <laughs> I think you should just take the minutes tonight. Steve. Absolutely not. <laughs> and when you're ready, I'll give you a password. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get in here. Well, I can just do it on my phone. You can off right. You can use your phone as the hotspot. You mean, or get into the document? No, just to get into the document because you can make changes on the hard copy. Oops. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, perfection. Okay, and how and where are the okay? Uh, the very the introduction on the document. No, where's the document? Is this just from the email? From the email, yeah. That's probably why I didn't know that I didn't have access. Yeah, it requires a code and all that. It's got to go back to the email. You can keep talking, I'll just open it. Great. Okay. Sure. Um, so for agendas and acknowledgement, 
Are we comfortable with that? I think that um, the 90 minutes I think is, that we have discussed as maybe it would be more like 60 minutes. Um, is there a, I think just from experience, you're thinking it's not. Don't, yeah. Don't underestimate. Okay. It, is it better to tell somebody they're there for 90 and then have them get out early? Yes, okay. always. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. If we say 60, people are going to be at their watch. Okay. So not needing to change that. Okay. Um, and does that all sound okay, Allison and others? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I still have more. I'm just waiting for it to be done. Okay. I haven't received the verification code yet. Um, and as far as disclosures, um, are we will be videoing it and audio recording it for oh, not taking this then? Okay. Um, do we have enough? We have enough space, right? Yes, yeah, we can always move things in the cloud. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I guess just to kind of go through the owl would be available to you to the group in particular if we know once we get to slide on numbers in that part that you could set this up and we could set it up here, we could set it up up in the other conference room depending on our schedule. Um, and then we could record it. And then I did look into what Anne had referenced to us as far as artificial intelligence and the scribing thing yep. um, to see about that. Um, but just so we could get the minutes and the major points out of the conversation. Okay. And you want to move up the chat table to figure it out. Okay. And is there a reason to have the group, any groups all in person and then all on Zoom or a combination is okay? You couldn't say probably in just got I would suggest that you, if you're going to have a group in person, have it in person. If you're going to have an online group, have an online group. So the mechanisms by which you do them are completely different. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be kind of, it would seem to be kind of an odd mix that mm -hmm. you've got some people here and some people there. Not as ideal. It would not as divided. Okay. Okay. If last minute somebody has to be online, yes. it's not a problem. But in general, that's what I would foresee too. Is that your experience with focus groups? Yes, but you know, when meetings all day and we have, we always have the hybrid. I think it's, yeah, yeah, it's always okay. General rule of thumb is that if it's hybrid, you always talk to the people that are not in the room first, mm -hmm. so that they feel more included. Oh, okay, and then you talk to the people that are in the room because they tend to take over the mic. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, I had some input on that one. I just I just rewrote it a little bit. I said, hello, everyone. My name is Allison Carey Blaze. I'm the moderator for today's focus group. I'm a member of the Topton Community Center, and I've been trained to lead this discussion. This committee is, discussing, is conducting research on recreational interests throughout our community for all ages that will create social connections among Topton citizens. We want to hear your thoughts and option, opinions on these topics and work to better serve the Thompson community. I thought in the first question to just jump right in with multi-purpose, multi-generational community center was a, this is what we want. We, we aren't there. Okay, well, and what I'm reading is what you wrote. Yeah, <laughs> so it's on the website. Oh, that's my change, that's not Allison's. Okay. I'm reading the current document that She's I She's in the SharePoint. She's in what you changed, Dana. On the oh, yeah, so, do we want to look at what Allison said though? Maybe. Like maybe I change things in ways that what's written here is what she wrote. What Leslie's looking at is what you wrote. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, got it. Now I'm I don't want to do. Okay, yes. I had pulled it up, so I was looking on here. Okay. So, Brian, do you find that um, you remember cis people if they participate on the internet to have their cameras on or not? Well, again, one of the advantages of doing focus group is not just the let's hear what people have to say, you get to watch the reactions, which right. is in many instances as valuable as what they say. Yeah. Okay. So it wouldn't be out of bounds to say if you're going to participate online, you know, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My feeling is, Allison, if you're comfortable with any combination of those that 
that's how you do it. But I just wanted to get your input and your feedback. I mean, I just thought to 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 be so specific about developing a multi-purpose, multi-generational community oh. center was just like it's okay to put it in later because we want to know your opinion about community centers, but if we just have it right the first one. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Okay. I like how you wrote it. When some of the other changes you made in that in your version you just read are the same ones I jotted down. So oh, I think we're you. kind of on the same page. Okay. There. Yeah. And we did say we're staying with nine minutes, correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh and disclosures, we've talked some about that with no taking. No. And are you all set with disclosures? From and do you have any suggestions in that paragraph? Oh, if we're looking at suggestions that you made. It looks the same. I, I didn't change anything. Okay. I have a question in regards to disclosures. So are these focus groups going to be posted on the website like our meetings are? Just to be how we decide. Um, because they're a public recording, someone could certainly ask for them through a FOIA request. But if this group finds that it's more you know, just the helpful drafting the document as opposed to a product that they want to put out, then we could just keep the recording but not put it on the internet. Because the only thing I'm wondering about is it says that it will be video and audio recorded for note taking and recording purposes, but it says that I will include what was said but not who said it. So those two sentences seem to conflict if we're videoing. If the video right, no. is solely for compiling data, it's right. okay, but we can't make it public. It has to be a private. Well, it can't be private. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. There's no work? such thing as, unless there's very few exceptions to the freedom of access stuff, um, and this wouldn't be one of them. So if we make a recording, someone could ask for it for a FOIA request, then it would be made public. Then we don't go out, to, go out of our way to publicize it, put it on the web. But if we make a recording, it's going to be a public record. Correct. We go to the Board of Selectmen and we make all these statements of what we heard or what was said. Mm -hmm. And one of them said to us, well, how do I know? Or, you know, they, you can say we have them all, you know, we recorded everything so you can listen to it. I agree with what Lynn is referring to here. We can't say we're not going to say who said it because if it's recorded, it's going to be public knowledge. So, right. so how, that means how do you want to rephrase that? What if, they, what if we just will say the report will include what was said but not who said it? Kind of differentiate the report from the report. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sensitive times though these days. And I'm thinking, what if we just audio it and we do not reference any last names in the form in the form in the discuss in the focus group? We just don't yeah. reference all we would reference is people's first names. Just that, for that privacy be purposes. That would be private. How do you want to read? So we want Is that to... something? So, I on? I'll tell you that by not an audio, but you're going to, it makes it a little more challenging to pull the information out. And for one thing, you're losing anything that resembles a facial expression. Yeah, that's true. So, but I will also say that he, again, I excuse me, this research, one of our jobs is to, you know, what we sign on says do no harm. And you know, we, we are very good about saying, when we do research for people, aside, you know, that we do not release names. It's like, you know, we're in a sense obligated not to do so. So if this is going to potentially become public, that needs to be stated up front, that this will probably become a public record which people can access. That will have implications. Maybe yeah, people will. will not be as honest as they will be that they would have been under those types of protections. And I don't know if there's, again, we work with a lot of governments. We always find ways around. I think the difference would be if you were doing the report because you're a private entity, right. because we're doing the committee so, compile that it's public. So, but that is, it's like we are, that is one, that is the rule we are obligated. If anything, it's going to have personal information is going to be released that has to be explicitly stated. You have to get ex any of as I would research, I'd have to actually get explicit permission to do so. So, so you're going to have to say, 
we're going to videotape and audio tape. The videotape will become a public record. And you're just going to have to. So, did I hear you correct to say that if Brian or Allie were the moderator and they were conducting it as a third party, then we, it wouldn't be an issue? Right, because they were private entity. I know you said that Allie mm -hmm. wouldn't be our, our moderator, but is that something we need to consider? So, yeah, it might be a challenge for Allie since she's in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yes, I mean, again, if it were, for instance, say, if we were doing it as a third entity, I would not tell you. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, we have fairly strong ethics that tell us that we have to do certain things and protecting anonymity and, you know, preventing harm from occurring are really at the top of our list. Again, there's not an issue if you just tell them this is going to be recorded mm -hmm. and publicly available. You just have to be honest. I mean, you can't sugarcoat it. And the question is, perhaps this is not even, I would not necessarily view this as a really sensitive issue. Again, there are, like I so said, we do things that oh we goodness. cannot release the names of people that come to us for obvious reasons. Because so, it is a very personal so issue. Should we delete out, uh, we need to write a report about what we discussed, period, and then go, um, this reporting will be made public, and then take out that next section and go back to you all welcome to skip anything? So, what I want, I almost feel like we're overthinking it. It's we're recording in order to give ourselves the ability to get back and write down data, create data. Somebody that wants that information can sit through the 900 minutes it is to watch it, but that's not likely, right? And this is just saying that we're going to use the data and when we, when we, um, market or whatever will have what you said but not necessarily your name will be on it right in the write-up and that's fine for the court but if that information could be released again you have to be explicit with people to say this will be recorded and i don't know how you want to you know cleverly say it's like well not everyone's going to be able to access it because no one does have a FOIA request but you're going to have to say that it's going to be seen that would get by. <laughs> you're going to have to say it's going to be recorded and the recordings will be publicly available. I think that almost, I think you're right, Steve. I think we're over analyzing it. And, and I also agree that I don't think this is really a sensitive topic. Um, discussion we video and audio recorded for note taking reporting purposes. Please keep in mind that we're a, this is a public proceeding yeah. in the, in the, um, any reports and recordings are also public records. Leave it at that. We're we recording that. <laughs> yeah, I, that down. <laughs> I got as far as public proceeding. Please keep in mind that this is a public proceeding and any re recordings and reports are all will be public records as well. Public records, perfect. Yeah. But I still think we can go into we need to write a report a report about yes. what we said and I will use the recording to help me, and, and I will include in that report what was said and not who said it. And if you feel the need to skip any questions, you know, feel free to. I always think we would take out the sentence that says nothing. Nothing. Yes, I agree. Right. Because because that's we not can't. Right. Yeah, we can't promise, promise that. that. But yeah. I think we can just make a note that we are sure. recording it on behalf of the town of Thompson. It okay. will be a public record, but then I'm, you know, we're going to write a report from this information, and in that report, we will not include names okay. of who said what. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to review what we're going to do for that one? Yes, sure. here. Uh, for this discussion, this discussion will be video and audio recorded for note taking and reporting purposes. Please keep in mind that this is a public proceeding, and all reports and recordings will be a public record. We need to write a report about what is discussed, and I will use the recording to help me. I will include what is said, but not who said it. You are welcome to skip any question you'd like and leave the group if you need. I might tell on that slightly because there may be a situation where either someone really wants their name attached or it really helps elaborate something. So uh, maybe just say the report is going to be focusing on the ideas as opposed to who says them so that we're not making another. <laughs> Is there a reason to use language of um, we will be writing the report? I, instead of saying I for you, Allison, yeah. just to keep it as a group. Mm -hmm. Well, that part is gone now anyway. No, I'm
we just changed it to we need to write a report focusing on the ideas um and it will include um uh, what was said or not who said it okay. it will yep. include it will focus on the concepts as, as opposed to the speakers or something that way we haven't made it that way promise basically that would be all of them but again it's the the, the flip side of that is you don't necessarily want it's like put my name on this because yes, that, that has implications as well. So optimally, yes, here's the report. It has everybody. It has their name. It has their, it's like their face. The report should be, this is what the, you shouldn't be pointing out a person. So for instance, if Mark says something mm -hmm. and it's Mark Waltz said, oh, that's probably really important. He's some really important. Well, Mark Waltz says, I'm going to give a million dollars for this. <laughs> You might want to put my <laughs> that's that's the back record. So okay. it's the same thing. You don't want it, it's like you, you don't want to have a name potentially carry unnecessary weight in what the report mm -hmm. conclusions are. Okay. Cool. And if someone really wants to see their name, they can go worth the nine hundred minutes. Okay. We're on term and terminology. Or guidelines. Oh, sorry, guidelines. Guidelines, I'm jumping. Okay. I'd like to remind everyone to above all be respectful and follow these guidelines. Okay. Any changes or suggestions? There was a repeat in the original panel. Do you have that one there? It's pretty um, you're talking about if you, if you need to step away for a minute. It's in there twice. Okay. So I left the uh it's Sort of in there. Right, yeah. Okay. Well, I changed it so that the the second bullet item says, if you need to step away for a minute, please mute your, mute your microphone and do not disturb the rest of the group. And then just took out the, the last, last one. one. I think the way it's supposed to be, where it says, if online, that should be yeah. if online. Right. Here are two things that if you're online. Exactly. Yeah, but that if online is still in there. Is the, no. the last one. Say, but what you say, if you happen to be yeah. in the group, she right. also wants you, if you need to step away from the online. group. It's two groups. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a bullet of the bullets. So, so, right. so, yeah. like so it should be, it's like if online, it's kind of like the hatch of the two things. Oh, I see. And if you want so to make it be like an arrow instead of a bullet underneath that one. Or if you want to make it even clearer, you can put above the first three if in person. Yeah, because that's not on there. Let's do that. Yeah. Good suggestion. Which means we need to add back this mute your I, I see that here. Okay. okay. Or if you're right here. Behave. <laughs> what? Okay. Is funny. Terminology is blank. Terminology are you going to be throwing acronyms and names and places or things that people may not know? So MTA. Instance, so, for instance, TCC. What is that? Yeah. You know, it's like so. This is really just it's like it's you know it's basically a lot of terms. It's like we maybe you may hear this and this is what it is. Are there stakeholders that may not people may not know what those are acronyms are? Yeah. So I mean, I think there are stakeholders who are not going to know what TCCC is. They may not know. If, if you're talking to someone from the Highlands, they may not know what MSAD 75 is. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think you have to put all that together or or what the TPL is, which is the Thompson Public Library. Um, I think, you know, there's there's a number of them that we probably... Or have. maybe just say, we strive, we're going to strive to use terms that everyone understands, that for some reason we use an abbreviation or something that we think that's to explain that to call it to our attention. We'll yeah. Say. But again, the, the other flip side is, just, well, here's 50 things that we're going to be using tonight. I hope you remember them all. But you know, the common ones, like I said, TCC is a pretty obvious one. Maybe we should include that one. You know, this is not a list where we're going to put 20 things. So, well, here's two or three things that might kind of come out that way. You know, Want to be sure you're not. Just to make sure you understand what we're talking about. So I have down TCC, TCC, MTA, Monera. And, and just I just Manera MTA. Sometimes people say that MSAD seventy five and TPL. Anything else? I mean, uh, those are just samples. I'm yeah. not sure they're appropriate. I was just no. I think those are good. Yeah. You're only saying the library once, but just spell it out. Right. Allison, what are you going to say? Library you normally, a lot of times. How would you normally communicate something like the library? Just say the library. 
But I do agree uh, with Ryan that the TCCC Hard should be spelled. We'll use that a lot. <laughs> You can spell it out first and then use the um, yeah. you can spell it out once, then it's like you'll probably save yourself 15 minutes by not having to repeat it. Yeah, yeah, true. And especially because I always have to count the C. I know, right? I just did. Yeah, I think we should just change it to two C's. It's easier okay. to say. <laughs> uh, anything else that you think you might speak in acronyms? With? Not that I can think of. All right, self intros, first names. Something you're looking forward to in the next few months? Uh, I think that was kind of general because it kind of depends on when we're having it. Like if we're going to have it in November, you could say something you're looking forward to in the holiday season. If you're having it in January, maybe you could say something like something you're hoping to do this winter. So I think that's kind of the idea. Perfect. So it's kind of like an icebreaker. Icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that one that you like? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, great. Okay, intro activity. Any suggestions there? There's one here. Or I, uh, there's a highlighted piece, out, um, Anne, which I think might have been. No, 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 no was, that's all hers. I thought it was great. Okay. Yeah, no suggestions. Okay. Okay. Great. I not trust all those things. Ah. <laughs> so that's what I can do that on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on to part two. I just, I, this, is, all this is the part I was very comfortable with. I think she's getting to the point. She's getting the information we want. I, I think most of these are spot on. And I like the pro too, um, Allison, when she's talking about Tell me more about this, you know, when you say, I want to look about that. And, and then in another point, she said something about, well, what about artists? What do you think about artists? Like, if no one's talking about artists all night, you can bring that up, that kind of thing. Right. So I thought these were great. I thought this is really, you know, what we're looking for. So it's good. Okay. Part three. How's everyone feeling? This is where I thought that asking about a community center was good. I thought in the first question it was too much to make it so specific, but now we're letting our hair down, we're getting to know each other, and now we want to know what you think about a community center. I think this was a good way to do it. I like that they said, you know, what does it mean to you? What does a community center mean to you? Because I would love to hear those definitions. And then what do you picture? I, I thought this again was excellent. No, no change. Yes, I think that's beautifully worded. We can get a lot of good information on Again, what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. This would be the job so far. Yeah, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right, part number four, the future. And I think we're right on. Yeah. So the only thing I have here is, I'm just looking at the body, of the, which is fine. Where, where is this? So what would you motivate you to actually participate in the activities organized by the community center? Whether you really just want to know activities at the center as a space or community center as a concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a subtle difference, which is, you know, because they can organize something and then we go out and we go hike someplace, as opposed to, yes, we go there and we don't. I don't know if that distinction makes any difference to you. It does. And the question is, so which is more important, or are they both important? So would it be something like, what would motivate you to actively participate in town organized activities? That's a question. What would, we, what would get you to come to our brand new to the building to the building versus what would motivate you to participate in the things that the people at the building organize, regardless of whether it's a building or not? I don't know. If that's a. It's a could it's we some, say it like should should we find the need? To build a community center um, and leave it open. Say what would you part? What would you go to to participate? My suggestion is going to be simpler than that okay. because I think it's really going to depend on what we get out of that particular focus group. So my suggestion would be, what would motivate you to actively participate in the activities organized with the community center? Okay. 
So it's either with the building or with, with the, the, the town, with the so just change it from by the to with the community. And it's telling where their mind goes. Right. And involves when people are focusing more on the activities of the building. Yeah. Or it's more at the community center because what Brian's kind of talking about is that the community center could create an activity that's based outside of the community center. Right. right. So yes. we want people going to the community center. I almost uh, or do we want to leave it open like this and let people take it to where the what true? Yeah, that's fair. I like the feedback. I think we want to leave it open as much like as possible. Yeah. I mean, if nothing, you could just add a pro. Hey, you know, if you want to go a little sure. detail about, oh, yeah. well, what about when we get you to actually drive down to the community center? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you have two options. Like, if they answer a specific right. way, then, then one yeah. pro is different and changes. But it, that last bullet, right, is is sort of gets to the point of it. Sure. In their mind, they're thinking about a community center. The last one says, well, uh, what about activities outside of a community center? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, maybe the question below that would drive it towards that would keep actually encourage more community members other than, you know, people tend to, if you put things in the broad sense, they tend to answer to their own viewpoints anyway, so that's fine. I hear a slight difference if we say a community center or the mm -hmm. community center, because I feel like the the community center is saying when we have a community center, it's going to be mm -hmm. the community center. But if it's this sort of like we wonder if we're going to have a community center, so it's just something I think about and see how it yeah. how it comes out. But it's less definitive. <laughs> You'll be on. Yeah, yeah, it does. It changes it, and I like with. That made, that was a big change. Oh, really? Okay. Um, I all right. Like, I was going to say, I do like the question where it says, are there other services or resources besides the community center that would benefit the community? Mm -hmm. That's a really great mm -hmm. question because it's in a totally different direction. Yep. And one that we want to know. And we might really want to know. Yeah. Because, yeah. Okay. These last several questions were really a whole round. Mm -hmm. In the close, I really like the bolded sentence. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be important to leave time for each person in the room to give any final thoughts that they have. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. And as I'm picturing that, I'm remembering back, Lynn and I were talking on the way in about how many people in each group. Can you remind me what the ideal It's in the minutes. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Eight, ten in person, four to six on the Okay. And that feels good to that many people in person would still be four to six. I have different numbers in the minutes than he has. Do you want to give those back to me? Is that what Allison said? Because I didn't make an adjustment when we go through the minutes. Like she had for an in person 10 to 12, hoping six to eight would show up. The sweet spot is eight. She said more than 10 is chaotic. Online group is a sweet spot of six, so I invite eight to 10. Those were the, that's what I okay. called it. Is that okay? okay? I think she was giving the invite number, but he was giving yeah. the actual. So I think they're yeah. great. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, and then closing. Anything else for closing? Okay. Okay. Here's something on the skip card. <laughs> How do you do that online? We're not. <laughs> Virtual gift card. We want in person. <laughs> yes, come. Okay, Alex, you will address the statements we plan to use in the uh, recruiting phase of the focus groups. Tell me oh, what we're yeah. doing that. Pam was supposed to send statements like what is our mission statement? Yes. She was supposed to Got say an intro. Did she give you feedback on those intros? I thought we did not see anything. I'll follow up with her. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Because I'm also thinking as in the recruiting phase, making sure the disclosures are very clear and said in the way that marks them <laughs> so that we can feel good about that as, as we're recruiting people. Okay, and then the email addresses were to come up with 50 to 60 email addresses of the residents to contact. Um, I think I did get feedback from the community someone that I was talking to that said, what about just like somebody who's not a stakeholder, but just a resident, just a resident living in the community. How that do we be a group of its own? Right. How do we yeah. the voter registration list? Just take eight or 10 random. You don't have emails. 
Or you'd have to go by, um, we could send them a letter. Yeah, on it's something in your prior thing, you can just send it there. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping is um, that maybe we would get responses from that and then that would be. And just right. to go back, Leslie, with the verbiage part that I was supposed yes. to get to Ali, I gave her the mission statement. Yes. I also gave her, do you remember the card that we had, the yes, initial exactly. card? I gave that to yep. her too so that she had how we explained and how yeah. we talked about it, which okay. I thought was a good okay. That was a good paragraph for yeah. her to build off. Can of. you email okay. that data to the rest I of us? I did send oh, it did? to all of you. Okay. It was in an email. Okay. okay. Right after we met. Right at the day after. I sent the um stakeholders, I sent the mission statement, and then there's there's a PDF of a card. Um, that we used the last time we did the survey that kind of explained what everything was. Great. And on the back side of it with the thank you. That was the one titled as promised. Probably yeah. okay, I see it. October 17th. I see the info card now. Yeah. Okay, so to get the email addresses, we just need to work together to work separately to do that. What are we thinking is going to happen? Well, if we're deciding that we're going to pick 10 at random from the voter registration list or a response to the crier, then we're looking for um, 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. We have a list of stakeholders and whatever email addresses we got. I went in and updated a lot of them. Oh, like the Thompson Trail Riders, um, Heather Allen from Mayor Meeting Soccer, Nate Wallace from Six Rivers Memba, um, Reggie, who, um, who's the president of, of Six Rivers Mountain Biking. I, anybody that I had as a resource to me, Elm Street Assisted Living. Um, I guess I'm wondering if we want to still include them. I do want to recommend we, we send out an email that we say something to the effect of if you are not able to participate, could you well, you know, could you get someone else on your team involved, like the Thompson Trail Riders? If Jenny Little can't make it, maybe she could send Charlie or Mike Little or someone else. To be able to represent that kind of group, that stakeholder. And so we don't want to just invite one person because they might just not want to be interested in being in a focus oh, group. Yeah. We we want them to know they're getting this email because of, of their connection to a stakeholder group and to make sure that they can give us another name if they're not able to participate. What do you think? I, I yeah, I think that when you when we send them out, we could say something to the effect of, you know, we value your opinion. If you're if you represent a local community connection and you're not able to attend, we you know we encourage you to pass it along to somebody else within your group that might want to represent you know something like that. You can make it like a sub sentence within the thing because a lot of times, again, I I draw a lot of this from my everyday work experience. We send a lot of things to group email boxes and we're like, hey, if you're not the person, feel free to find the yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. So we also talked about to Allie Tipperary, she said we should have an evening group, we should have a Saturday group, we should have a daytime, you know, different different times and different days group. So when we send out these invitations, do we say, listen, we have several groups, we have a Tuesday night, a Thursday night, a Saturday morning, and then they pick by when they can come because we want to mix the groups, we don't want them to be the same. Right. So it would be based on availability versus there's got to be some internet way of gathering that and having people yes. sign up for groups. I, mean, I think it's like you guys are going to use a Google Box. Yes. Hi, go up here and tell us it's like who you are. Give us your email address. Tell us what your interests are. Here's some groups. Which one can you get? Check out boxes. And we just make the Google Doc public. Okay. So and again, and first okay. names, last initial. Again, so I guess you eventually have to be able to get back in touch with these people so that you would have you're gonna they're gonna have their, you're gonna have of course have their email, yeah, so that and you know, first name initial at that point would be fine. But in we're starting with, I mean, I can't, I don't recall exactly how many groups that we just set the two settle in. We said five, five, yeah, five. So you're gonna have five groups of between six and eight people. 
which means that for that type of to populate that type of group, you're going to have to reach out to hundreds of people. So my suggestion is that you send it to these people and tell them to forward it on to others. Mm -hmm. Not just say, hey, you're not the right person, because again, what you're gonna find is that I mean, like I said, when we recruit, we you know, for you know three or four weeks, we'll, we'll go through 500 people trying to get the appropriate mix and the appropriate people that can show up at the times we want to be there. That's why you're using the Google Doc, which is gather the information, get when people can come, and then you then you go through and invite back the people that you want. So it's like this is thinking, it's like those kind of pre recruit a bunch of people. And then what we can do is based upon what we need, then we can send invitation. So when you send it out, don't say it's like we are holding it. If you're interested in participating, please fill out this form. We'll be back in touch. So don't necessarily say we're guaranteeing the slot. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That all stuff you're familiar with, Jim? Again, because if I think if you just send it out this list, you'd send it out to that, you get to have that list, you would you'd be in either you'd be quarter way towards filling the focus groups. And then you know, for the folks, I think yeah, whatever whatever public means of communication you have, send it out there too. Perfect. We have Facebook. We have five thousand users in our database. Obviously, we want to make them tops and residents. Mm -hmm. That's who we want. But I, we can make that specific. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going through this. I'm looking at some of the pages that we have here. And I know the answers, it's just to have to take the time to put the stuff in here. Um, like the health center at the high school is Kelsey Clog. I know who the guidance counselors are, that type of stuff. So we can, I mean, we should be able to fill this up. It just means right. time. And, I, and like I said, you know, maybe we, the other thing you want to think about is I don't necessarily want, want the head, the director, the president of everything. Mm -hmm. To make all, it's like what you really do is you want the people or the bees because those are the people that are going to use the community center. So, again, we'll send it out so that you have a form that gathers the information. I mean, you just need to gather email address, uh, first name, and initial. Here's some what areas of what are your areas of interest or expertise or what do you want with artists, seniors, disability community, and just that way that will give you the ability. Once you have this on the pile, to say, all right, well, we can put together a mix of groups based upon when people are available and the kind of mix of you know, kind of background that we're also looking for. Well, I'm going to stick to my my comment about just you know parents of kids ages you know four to ten and ages ten to fifteen, you know, like they're. I don't know that that is represented in this document. Okay. That is a group of right? interest. But I it have is, children. It is, it it is, is in that document. document. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I just want to make sure, right, and that we're really just getting yeah. a ton of jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because you you talk about somebody from a, who's runs a daycare is going to have a completely, and but maybe that person would pass it on to somebody well, in their daycare. Well, Eric is a prime example of, she's the president of the PTO at William Woodside, but she has kids in her daycare yeah. and she has other contacts. You know all that. Yeah. Okay. And and in the same way, Megan Robertson, who's the president of the PTO over in Woodside, uh, Williams Cone, would do the same type of okay. thing. So that we have those contacts. Bring it to the meeting and yeah. say who wants to be a part of this. Okay. We would get people from the first survey too that said they wanted to give their email addresses for more information. Okay. To I ha we have a document of about what do you think? Two hundred? Yeah, we have a lot of, a lot of places. To, yeah, we have all right the people who answered the first right. survey. We have their mm -hmm. emails. Well, so I don't think, it, for what it's worth, I don't. I wonder if before we figure out what email addresses we want to hit, we have to figure out what's going to be in the Google Doc form. Meaning, we have to pick what dates we're going to offer, right. and what exact questions do we want to ask to help us decide who goes into which group. If we're going to say that. We want the first name and you know first name and first initial of last name, but do we want to say something like which area of the community center, I mean, uh, which area most interests you, or which one are you currently involved in? Is there a specific you know I don't know what questions because we're I think if I'm understanding Brian we're going to take that list 
are going to come back and we're going to have 100 email addresses of people that want to participate. And then we're going to decide as a group, how do we want to break it up based on their first and second choices of dates that they're available. So I think we have to think more about what that what those questions are. What those questions are because we can't do that. We can't send anything. Out and help us. So uh, so well the number wants to be short. So yes. Are you interested? Yeah. What dates are you available? Can I get your email address, your first name and middle initial? And then you've already kind of built a list. Do you have children? <laughs> it's like are it's like are you interested in the following? It's like uh, it's like are you do you represent or or you have interest in any of the following groups of people activities and just give them a list. I mean it's like you already have pretty much it's like yeah athletics, senior citizens, youth teams, churches, businesses, outdoor recreation, food, mental health, education, healthcare. Okay. Yeah, you've kind of already built your list. Yeah. And so again, what I want is people. It's like I don't want a people. I don't need the person who is quote unquote an expert at healthcare. I need to know is this an area. That you have some experience or you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then the basic demographics do you have children? Mm -hmm. I mean, school fees. Do you have children? Yes, which I guess would really, really need a different school between children and children in the school district. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other basic things you probably want to ask in some broad terms what their age is. Just like mainly, we do that mainly to try to get young people because mm -hmm. it is nearly impossible to get young people to do anything. At least that way is a way to potentially identify. Anyhow, I'm thinking it's like, well, are you 18 to 34, 35 to 49? We're not really asking anything too personal. And I don't know whether it's like geographic representation is a relatively important thing for you. You may want to ask the general part of the town, but you can kind of partition the town into kind of conquer the areas that people would go. Not sure we're that big, and, but we're yeah. just making sure that uh, right. So, yeah, you can ask basically how you mail it's like basic gender, basic age. It's like here's some areas, it's like you know, do you have children? And then here's some very basic areas. Are you it's like do you have interest in these areas? So, this also makes me think about a timeline of when we're sending out this email to like. So what, if we can think about that a little bit, when do we have to have this letter or all the, the big picture stuff all together? If we want to go backwards, yeah. if we are hoping to do a survey with the results from this, and there's going to be a primary in uh, I think it's mid March and the second week of March. So an early voting would start a couple weeks before that. So if we'd probably, I think, want to get the results from our focus groups by early February. Um, which means we need to have them probably between middle and late January. Uh, so, uh, so, and again, our elected Dallas and how many she wants to try to squeeze into a couple of days or spread them out a little bit. So, working backwards. So, yes, we need to have a survey designed in place prior to March 1st. Right. Yeah. Which and means that we have to spend. Being, and, and I guess I'm just trying to, why do we have to have it before the primary? Just think it's a way to have Get a larger the survey collection out, of the, the actual real survey. Out, people okay. are the primary right. when they vote. So you're probably going to want this. Yeah, you're going to use because the survey is going to take some time. I mean, it's going to take a couple weeks to develop. And if you really, yeah. You actually want to dedicate four resources. After the groups are done, there's a couple of weeks of compiling all that information into a report that's useful. Again, someone's got to go read everything, and a report has to be written. It doesn't happen overnight. And that's only a week or two just to do and, that. Am I right that we're compiling that? Yeah. As of now, yes. Well, we don't necessarily have to have a report to compile the right to survey, right? Right, you'd have to have this mainly the key. Yeah, eventually, yeah, you don't have to have it's like everything written down, but you're going to want, all right, here are the main things that came out of this thing that we can it's, that we can now take and structure questions around. Because the questions are going to take, it's like, well, these people said they were a bowling alley and an Olympic size swimming pool and all those other things. Well, but would this, it help us to not have that time crunch? Is that too tight of a time crunch? So, but then working backwards from that, it's like Allison. I don't. I presume she's not going to try to get all these things. To, oh, great! I'll just tap list two days. <laughs> you know, probably she's going to want a few days. Um, you know, she'll probably want a week or so to just hold the curse. 
If we don't do it in March, then our next one would be in January. I, I mean, June. Nothing says we have to try to make the survey go over the election. That was just no. an idea. I no, but I think that's where yes. we're going to hit the most people, and that's where we can get the most. June would get a lot less people than March, I think, because March will, assuming it's still some type of vibrancy in the presidential race, we might get it. I think it's going to be Maine's first primary ever, at least in our lives. So we'll probably a pretty good turnout in March, whereas June, we get maybe 5% of the voters at most. We get the teachers. <laughs> So, and working our backwards again. <laughs> oh. I mean, we don't just try to squeeze the groups into you know, two days. Think about that the emails can go out as far ahead as the date as possible, but you're going to want the two weeks prior to the first group to do all the organization and send out the final advice. So you can we can you can start advertising these now. So you came up with some dates. Say so we're going to send post groups on these dates, and you could. Broadcast out through all the channels for the next, you know, next month, next month of that. You know, you're not going to really probably be able to get back in touch with people realistically till after after the year, right? Just yeah, we're not really going to be sending people invitations to do something for Thanksgiving or Christmas because they'll they'll just forget. So I guess the question is, yes, working backwards, you would have to have your groups in mid January, which would mean that. You can start gathering the information out from all these people. Don't push it again. There are some advantages of doing it early. There are some disadvantages because first people will promise to your schedules all change and they have to do something. Wouldn't, else. wouldn't it be advantageous to have that Google Doc in place so that when we do the advertisements, yes. that Google Doc link could be put in the ad and people could start writing us and say, I want to participate? Yes. The key thing that is you have to, you have to actually settle on the date. We are, we're going to do this. Here are the dates that we are. By the end of the week, if you want, I'll come up with a list of, say, eight dates this room's available to mid to late January. And then you can look at your schedule, Allison, and see which ones look like work for you. And we could have that yeah. list finalized by the end of the week. And then my hope is that maybe I would attend one of them, somebody else would attend another, mm -hmm. but you'd always have another community center committee that are there. And someone's supposed to be a scribe anyway, taking written notes while she's having the discussions. You know, we'll have the recording, but haven't been something happens for the recording, sure. it would be nice to have a few okay. notes. Someone's supposed to be an informal scribe, yep. an E1. For sure. So, <laughs> Lynn's going to be for, there for everyone according to Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there okay, that? so eight dates for mid to late January, and then we'll start working on a document for that. Okay. So we've got to make a plan for how that's going to, that document's going to be. And, and you'll be working with the fact that some people say, yeah, I'm available, then they'll check a bunch of boxes, and they'll not be available. That's, just, that's why you end up having to recruit so many people. Right. Because, Again, unless you just do it the absolute night before, you know, people's plans are always change. And we also have to have a plan in place because we're talking January. <laughs> so if right. all of our right. in-person right. planning doesn't, right. are we just going to go back to online for each one of them, or are we going to look to reschedule? Because we said we gained so much more out of in-person, but I would say that if it's a storm and things are closed, the schools are closed, and we Right. So but do we change it to Zoom? But can we have a Zoom meeting if this building is closed? I think that's oh yeah. Oh you can. I could do this for my house. Oh okay. okay. So we could we could do that. We could go bad weather be online. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And there may be some people that don't use Zoom and if those that are use Zoom and we can offer them to come to a different other date. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, mm -hmm. How about we have snow days? Okay. Well, I don't think we want to have a snow day for each meeting because we do this forever. Right. But I think they could just roll over and come to another meeting. Right. Right. Sure. Oh, uh, yes. Unless, unless, that, unless it's the last one. Yeah. yeah. Then we have a snow day. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So, and again, the final thing is like, okay, so we recurred a bunch of people. We got a list. We narrowed it down. It's like, let's send these people their invites, send these people the invites. You actually have to verify that they're going to come. Mm -hmm. Which is you have to send a reminder saying, you know, you agreed to come here on January 15th to this group. We just need to confirm you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. We can text or email people yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to say anything about texts? 
on the disclosure or anything that we would is text better than an email? Well, then we have to go on the Google Doc if you want to have te yeah. text capability. You'd have to ask for that there. Yeah. I don't think we want to make it. No. Okay. No. I just get really text not text. a service for texting. Yeah. It would be us probably doing that. Yeah. I don't know that you want to do that because that would just stick to email. Yes. Okay. So, Okay. Oh, the say that like there's also, you know, and we, we don't, there's this little gray area on whether you can text people about their permission. That's what I'm saying. We yeah, in our right. software yeah. for the department, they can sign up for it, but about 50% of them are willing to sign up for it yeah. until they, people get a text and then they call us complaining, well, I didn't get the text, we need to sign up for the text. So it's, you know, right. And then we're using our own phone. So, okay. Uh, okay. So I'm hearing, Pam, that you'll do the start to work on the, the emails. And then, um, hold on, I'm taking action items here. Yeah. And then I, I think we need to decide how we're going to get the document together that's going to go out for the invite. So, Alice and I would think that you would be a part of that because. Yeah, as a lead person and person with experience, that would and be great. Mark is going to get the dates yeah, available. Dates. Right. I think the dates are going to be the key, and then I think from all the things that Brian listed off. So we want yes, they're interested in first name, first initial, email address. I think are you Thompson resident? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah I think we have to put it on there. I don't think we have to be like you can't participate. We'll just be like, oh, cool. Yeah. Well, there can be people who have homes in Florida and Thompson, but they're not in Thompson, really. Right. 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 Um, no words. We could put school age kids, yes or no, and then okay. leave it at that. But I don't know if we want to go more in depth on that kind of information. Right. And then the age demographics. I don't know if that's as important to us. And then I think if we do, and then, and then, and then, if you start adding too many questions, then people are like, oh. Then this isn't the survey or kind of thing. Yeah. So like you have to have the right number of questions to get what we need out of it, but not have so many questions that they're not gonna they're gonna stop filling it out halfway through because it feels like too much. Is it something that we can come up with a document and run it by you? Is that yep. within yep. so I'll take a look at it. Okay, right? Yep. So how do we want to make that document up? I was just gonna ask him, what was it you were gonna do on that action item about the email? I'm just going to finish the email list. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to create. Yes, yeah. I'm going to pull the emails out from the 200 books and or whatever that answered. Okay, and I'm going to try to get complete yeah. this list okay. with email addresses. Okay. Now we have down as a tentative date to get together if we have an additional meeting on the 20th of November. Do we want to meet to okay. finalize the Google Doc questions? <laughs> Let's say two weeks. Do we want to finalize the Google Doc question? Thank you. But before you answer that question, Pam and I both, sorry, I don't want to speak for Pam, but we, we, neither one of us can be here the first meeting in December. So okay. if, you, if you want to meet that night, I'm going to try to get one of the gals from the planning staff to fill in to do what I do because Pam's out and I'm in Virginia that week. In December, not yeah, really. Yeah, December one. Okay. So if you'd rather be you're talking the 20th, about the the Monday of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I know Steve won't be available because that's when tryouts are happening. Mm -hmm. But if we get together to create these documents, that works for me. How do you work best, Allison? If you're a lead person. If, is that okay? I can be here on the 20th. If Steve can't be here on the 20th, you may re yeah, you still have a quorum because it's only five, so there'll be three. Then there are three. Maybe four, but oh. maybe two. You can still do the work, even if you don't have the form. Yeah, you do, it's a workshop. It's not a vote on any. Yeah. Call it a workshop. Okay, okay. so that, that's yeah. going to be us creating that document and getting you something. <clears throat> and then we'd have to figure out for the sixth meeting. So on the sixth, you can do one of two things. Either I can set it up and then um, you can do it as a Zoom meeting. You know, I can make you the host or just someone, whoever you want. Alice probably, I think Alice is the host. Um, not that I'm just nope. pushing your Zoom ability. Um, <laughs> I could set it up the house and you guys could have the meeting virtually that night rather than show up here in person. 
Okay. Um, or if you want to show up in person, I can ask um, either Julie or Sky if they could come to one to do that. Right? We could just Zoom. If it's just a workshop and it's not an official meeting. And then we would have that document to you ahead of the sixth meeting. Okay. I don't know how far in advance you would need it. Oh, that would um, probably put that. Yeah. It seems like we've already it's narrowed it down. It's not going to be very long. Yeah. yeah. So, Maybe even by the 27th. Yeah. Or the 29th, something like that, yeah. either Monday or Wednesday before. Um, and it's the December 4th meeting that you're saying is on it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll get it to you. To, yeah. Okay. That sounds great. So we didn't establish a time for the 20th. There was no meeting scheduled. What time do you want to zoom on that? I'm checking the building, Mark. Mm -hmm. That's a zoom. No, we're going to zoom. The, the, the meeting you have to zoom is the the four. The four. We can meet in person at the four. Okay. In person is great. Then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we just need a time. So it doesn't matter. He's checking the schedule. What time are we meeting on the 20th? That's what he's looking up. He That's what he's looking up. Okay. He's looking up the meeting on the 20th. What time do you you can have any time you want. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. Steve won't be here, so it's whoever's here. I'm going to. Default to you guys. I'm happy with whatever you want. There won't be a board of appeals. No, there won't. Six o'clock? So, okay. 4 30? Yeah. What do we mean? I mean, we could five. Can't five do five. Four. Five. So, so, what's that speed? After five. Six o'clock. Two, six o'clock. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, Mark, I wouldn't think that would be anything you need to do. Be at, right? Right. No, I don't think so on that one. Okay. No. No. No, and then you're sending the documents out prior to the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ideally, twenty seventh or twenty eighth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. So we've kind of, we've finished everything under three for focus group work. So I have one more action item I just wanted to report, and that's for you, Ryan, that you're going to check with. Um, Allie about her comments on our, our input on that card and stuff. On the, I had given her the mission, um, mission statement. The mission, the mission statement they had in the uh, card and trying to put together, uh, she was going to look at those and make that work. And it's uh, number three, the second one is the one in the that's what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it's just the, in, most, the introduction of the mm -hmm. focus group agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. so we would need her information by the 20th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Okay. Super. I would think that hopefully by the time we walk out of here on the 20th, we would have the introduction and what the Google Doc will be asking yeah. people. Yes. And we will have the dates, our, our hopeful dates. Yeah. Dates. Yeah. Our yeah. hopeful yeah. dates that we're all going to, yeah, finger crossed that there's no snow on those dates. And hopefully we'll get this all done. Yeah. And would that work if it's say we shoot for like ninety five percent done, and then you review it, make sure from your experience what it is, and then you would forward it on. And then I would say for to the whole group yeah. for Mark and Brian and all of us. Yes. Okay. Great. <clears throat> okay. And then just let me know. You don't know me tonight, but for the fourth, if you want me to set up a Zoom meeting and make Dallas and the host, or if you want me to get someone from upstairs to fill in and do it in person. I'm going to vote for in person because I will tell you, I very rarely use Zoom. So <laughs> most of my stuff is is Teams. So okay. I'm not going to be as familiar with Zoom. Or you could set up your own Teams meeting with that one. Too. But if you if people don't have Teams, yeah, it yeah. doesn't work. Oh, like right. you and I have it, but there aren't a lot of other people in this. I will be at that meeting. That would be a week's work that night. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know that, but I'm just making yeah. a point that. Yeah. Okay, and then the, what we're doing on the fourth is sharing the document and getting feedback. What what is our agenda on the fourth? Um, what are we going for at that? Reviewing the email. Be, we'll be looking to finalize the date of when we want to send our first round of emails. Have the email list because we'll have confirmed the what the Google Doc is going to ask these people. So now we have a doc for people to start picking on dates and we can then decide what emails we want to send it to and what date we want to send them. Okay. 
I'm just wondering, is that just a working? I want to be respectful so, of your times too. So you, so by that time you should have, here's our Google Doc, done. Here are the dates, done. Yeah. The main purpose I've seen for that meeting is finalize your communication strategy. Okay. And the question is, you might actually be able to do that and knock that all off. Mm -hmm. On the 20th. Yeah. Right. Because that's really just saying who are we sending things out to? I mean, who's who we email? What other channels are we going to broadcast us through? And what dates are they going to happen? Mm -hmm. But we're really on the fourth looking to get your feedback that we're heading in the right direction and doing the right things. Right. And like I said, like I said the communication plan, like I said, Pam's here, is like she's taking care of two thirds of it right now. The other thing is, are we going to put it on our Facebook page? Are we going to put right. it in? Right. What other communications will we put it in? The goal is be on meeting the 20th. The introduction is going to serve as the language that'll probably go into your broader media chat. So, what you're saying, Brian, that it's conceivable you may not need to meet on the board. It's conceivable that you could just get a button done on it. It's all going to be done on the 20th. But we won't have your feedback. But I'll be here on the 20th. Oh, <laughs> so oh, that okay. was. Okay, <laughs> I missed that. Great. Okay. So, not just a, a working meeting with you here. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. So, okay, great. And like I said, because once you do that, it's like once you get here's the Google's doc, here's the introduction. Then it's just okay. When do we want to put it on the Facebook page? And when do we want to send? When do we want to click send on the email? And so maybe just, we just meet on the 18th. Maybe we just don't have a meeting on the fourth. December 18th was another backup meeting. So would there be reason you, at that point? You might even not. Be, if week. you decide on the 20th that you want to pull the trigger, whatever date in December. We can just pull the trigger whatever dates in December. So you might not need as long as we have a plan. Okay. We might not need maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the goal. See how much we can get done on the twentieth. Okay. Okay. Be ready to send out communication. Yeah, we can advertise on the website as well as well as the client on the Facebook page. As long as, as we decide, yeah. as long as we decide what we want by the thirtieth of November, I can set that stuff up on Facebook and put okay. it on the web. I can do both the website and Facebook. The crier costs money though, right? Uh, if the the town puts a page in the web in the crier every month, so as long as it is nothing overwhelming, it's just sure. a brief little ad with a QR code that takes you to the website that explains okay. everything. Okay. No problem. Okay, and I make the crier page too. Okay, <laughs> but so you've got connection. <laughs> As long as you do it before the 30th. Right. So it sounds like the meeting of the 20th is the time to do this. The, the yeah. March, yeah. so the December version, I just talked to Charlie this morning, the December crier, I have to give to him by the 21st. So of November. So it sounds so like the meeting ready on the 28th. Better resolve all these things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then just we left the emails and whatever it's coaching December, and then the first meeting in January. We set up the we groups, put the the groups. And then we start getting ready for the I have a group of and right quite honestly, I can put I mean, I can put the 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 community center committee is looking for members to, you know, participate, blah, 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 go to this site and have the QR code. If it's not finished or complete when I send it to Charlie, it's not a big deal. As long as the code's right and it gets them to where they need to be. Yeah. The rest of the stuff. It takes two weeks for him to get it circulated in the mail and out. Oh, okay. So, I'm still out. Out. so I you know what I'm saying is I can give it to him on the 21st. You don't have to have it finished as long as I have a place that it's located and have a code that goes there. And we can make a fake a fake Google Doc just to test out the code to make sure it's right before we place the statement. Yeah. And should we have on the action items the crier goes out the twenty first? It's good. Okay. Anyway. for us to make sure we remember. It, yeah. Well, you I'm gonna have it probably set up before the twentieth because I'm. Yeah. I take the first the two days before Thanksgiving off to cook. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> so we will apply the twentieth. <laughs> Don't feel that mine. You've been waiting for a very long time. <laughs> Pam's been saying she's going to bake us pie for about six months, but it never comes. Well, it always ends up yes. that something has happened. So. So. Exactly. That's right. Yes. Just come to those who wait. Okay. So I want to be, um, so we're done with number three. 
Um, and we're going to move on to reviewing minutes and then adjourning the meeting. So, so on the 20th, if we wanted to go earlier, would be better because it came to go over. Yes, Steve has tryouts and they're at 7.30 that night. So you could be here at 5 or 5.15, 5.30. I could be here by 5.15. Would you prefer 5.30? No, 5.15 is fine. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Yeah, uh, then. Yeah. Yeah. I can't see. We don't know what the end. Okay. Well, the 20th at 5 15. I'm just warning the schedule. We don't know that it um, comes of you. Okay. So. I think it's wrong with the select board member planner if you need to come. Brian and Mark. I'll take a look at it. It's in a script. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, reviewing minutes. You want to excuse me? Yeah, thank you very much. Super helpful. Look at all this work we're getting done. Good. Okay. I think um, when I look at the minutes, I really appreciate the level of detail because we can reference back and all of that. And I also hear Mark saying good night, good night, good night, good night. Good that it's good night. simple yeah, okay. Yes, yes, you have it. <laughs> well, right. normally simple is okay, but, but the details are important in something like this because we need the details to create the documents. Like how many people, what is the goal, how many is too many, you know, which we just had a discussion about that, then we, we really, if we just said we discuss how many people should be in a meeting, that won't be helpful. Right. But is there reason to not have this level of detail? Just you're going to scare off future secretaries. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone might be happy to take, like, if you look at the minutes for the select board, they have no way near this much detail. Because there was a discussion about such and such, someone made a motion, someone second, they decided to do such and such. Um, so I think that. And a good point that there's a lot of stuff you want to have, but Ann's notes don't necessarily have to be the same thing as the official meeting minutes. Oh, I so, do, yeah. So just because information needs to be recorded, it has to be in the minute. I mean, if there's no harm in just putting these in, I think so, it's helpful to the committee. There's no harm in someone to do the work. Okay, okay. So we'll leave it at that. I might still be here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know tomorrow. Yes. Okay, so we've been three minutes now. Yes. I really didn't find anything. Okay. I'm just seeing in the um, questions suggested for focus groups. What's there? Where was that? Um, on the last, last page. page, you can talk about funding. It says, did, I don't notice that. Yeah, they did. And the questions it said, how do you think uh, top will go about providing this community center? And that's where they're supposed to come up with, well, taxes or, or a grant, or do you, are you willing to? Pay a fee to use a facility. Yes, that's right. You know, the whole financial picture will come up in discussion when it comes to those yeah. topics. Well, no one's mentioned how we're going to pay for this. What, do you, what is some, how do you think we're going to pay? Oh, I see. Funding and development sustainability of the community center. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe under where it says Allison, this, um, not Allie, but Allison, volunteered to serve as moderator for the focus groups. She will have one additional member present for each. Well, that would be in tonight's minutes, right? Because we yeah. haven't decided. Oh, um, we talked about it last. It's also a week one. Okay. Yes. You know but, what? Yeah, to this, tonight's meeting's fine. 
Is that the only place I have it wrong on yours, or did I spell it wrong too? Um, I, I was going to suggest in the future that we just put Allie T for Allison Tipley and just Allison for her because. There's two marks, there's two Allisons, it makes it a little crazy. The hell's more plausible than I feel with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think if it's in tonight, that's fine. I didn't see any changes. But I'll get that correction. So that's just the typo. It doesn't have to actually have a change. I just have to fix it. And um, what's the typo? Uh, Allison's name is spelled wrong on the very oh, I, yeah. fourth yeah. line from the bottom one yeah. L. And I didn't put page numbers on this. Usually, if it's more than one page, I put a page number in the top right and insert a page number. Up. Are you just going to make the correction and want me to do it? Say, yeah. I can make the correction and just update it on the yeah. website. Yeah. Oh, great. Super. Good. Okay. Um, any other action steps? How are we going to I'll go through the actions again. Yeah. Uh, right now, we have Pam is going to finish the email list, pull out the 200 plus others from our stakeholders list. Now let's bring her pie. This is Allison is going to be um, it's pretty uh, drafting a doc for the invite. Uh, Mark uh, Watts is going to be pulling up available dates to have these focus groups here on site. Brian is going to check with Allie T to get um, the info we wanted on her response to what introduction we were doing. And then we have a prior deadline of the 21st to put in the announcements. Which Pam is going to draft up and you're going to draft that. So, Pay a bill. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one Pam. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> it's Pam VP. <laughs> Blueberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's great. Any other action steps other than meeting more people on our committee? Yeah, I'm assuming the, there's no applications. Huh? I'm assuming there's no applications. No, no. none I haven't made a barrel. We have not advertised in the prior this past two months. Um, I'll put that on my list to add to the page. We can put anything we want this got, month. Eric said, right? Yeah. She just added that to her action. She's going to advertise the prior for the Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. It, well, won't, be just, it won't be just for our committee. We send yes. them for all the committees. But them. can you just list ours first? <laughs> you know, the first red is, is like. What are you doing Wednesday morning at night? Why? When by you a staff meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you can give her one task. <laughs> How about now we adjourn this meeting at 7 37? Second. All in favor. All in favor. Yes. 